It's been a couple of months since I last did an update on my dividend investing portfolio and personal finances, and we're still seeing a market in a bit of a downturn. In this video I'll provide a detailed review of my dividend stock portfolio and the dividends that I received from July and August this year. I'll also discuss any stocks that I bought or sold during that time too, and explain what I'm planning to do next within my portfolio. And finally, I'll give a quick update on my income and expenditure for my rental property investments. My stock portfolio currently stands at £40,968.93 invested. The total market value has been quite volatile over the last few months, and you can see that my returns actually went up to 16% at one point, and then have reduced to around the 13-14% to mark. But as a dividend investor, I don't really worry too much about the market value of my holdings, as we all know the market is very volatile, and it's my intention to never sell. I'm only really interested in the income that the portfolio generates through dividends. I'm looking to build a cash generating asset that pays me a passive cash flow every month. This is a long term play for me, and I don't ever intend on taking a penny out of my portfolio for at least the next 15 years or so. Instead, all cash generated is reinvested back into the portfolio to buy more shares that will pay more dividends. I'm hoping that the snowball effect of compounding reinvested dividends will eventually mean that this portfolio can start to contribute towards my monthly expenses. Whatever is happening in the market over the short term doesn't change what I'm trying to do in the long term. And my investing approach is a very simple one, which is to buy good companies and ETFs each month hold them for the long term, and reinvest all dividends. I do have a video explaining my investing strategy in full if you're interested, and I'll link this at the end of the video and in the description. So if we look at what's contributing towards my returns, we can see that the majority of my portfolio has yielded a return on my investment, which is really pleasing to see in a visual. And then looking at how my portfolio is split, we can see that the chunkier slices of this pie chart are my ETFs, which is how I want to keep it. Breaking that down further, these are my top 10 positions in my portfolio by market value. The ETFs that I have do take up the top 5 positions, which was always my intention and how I want to keep it. If you've watched my other portfolio update videos, you'll know that I added a new ETF a few months ago, Invesco's High Dividend European Offering, ticker EUHD, and my plan was to keep investing into it to push it into the top 5 position, which is where it sits currently, so I'm happy to have hit that now. And making up the rest of the list are some large blue chip companies. Interestingly, it seems that the intrinsic value of my portfolio based on free cash flows is massively undervalued at the minute. This valuation model doesn't take into account my ETFs, so it's just the individual stocks that I own. We can see that the market value is around 28,000, but based on the free cash flows that the businesses generate, the valuation will be closer to 56k. I do place a lot of emphasis on a company's ability to generate cash when I do choose which individual stocks to invest in. So for now, this is a pleasing metric. The apps that I'm using here are Trading212 and Simply Wall Street. If you're interested in starting a portfolio with Trading212, I do have a link in the description where you can use my code and we'll both get a free share worth up to £100. Trading212 haven't been taking on new customers until recently, but they are now accepting new signups. I've also left a link to Simply Wall Street in the description as well, which is a really nice investment tool that I use to evaluate companies and track my portfolio's performance. I have always tried to invest a minimum of at least £500 each month, and this graph shows how my total amount invested has grown over time. It's nice to see an upward trajectory, which shows that I've been pretty consistent at doing this so far. I've mentioned previously that I was hoping to start investing £1,000 each month, as I moved jobs and secured a nice pay rise. But given the way that the cost of living prices have been increasing through inflation, this just isn't possible currently. I've definitely noticed steep increases to my food shops and energy bills, so, being an accountant by trade, naturally, I'm erring on the side of caution with my personal finances. Instead, I'm looking to add £750 when I first get paid my salary, and then as I go through the month paying any expenses that I have, just trying to keep things as reasonable as possible. 
Therefore, if I have any cash left over at the end of the month, I can just add that into the portfolio as well. My strategy is to continue dollar cost averaging into my portfolio each month, which should smooth out any price volatility over the long run. Since my last update, there have been a number of purchases and sales within my portfolio. Notable additions include a further £2,390 invested into my ETFs, including £1,233 into EUHD. I also boosted my positions in Coca-Cola and 3M. And I added another 350 shares of Greencoat UK Wind, the renewable energy company, as I've been doing a lot of research into them recently and saw fit to boost my position. Looking at the sales now, I have actually fully sold out of six positions and reinvested all proceeds back into the buys. I've mentioned a few times that when I first started investing, I had too many positions in my portfolio and found it hard to keep up with everything going on in all the companies. It's been my aim to trim this down to a more manageable level and if I have any doubts about a company, then I will look to sell. So I decided to sell out of Abvi and GlaxoSmithKline just because I feel like I don't have complete conviction and knowledge in the sector. The pharmaceutical industry is very complex, and although I felt that I had an okay level of understanding, I did have a lot of uncertainty about the future of the drugs that they produce. For example, drug manufacturers have a patent on certain drugs for a period of time, where only they are allowed to sell them. But once those patents expire, anyone can create and sell these drugs. And I feel like I don't know enough about the company's pipeline and history to understand whether they'll have a continuous stream of innovation in this area to keep churning out profitable medicine, or whether they'll just end up losing some of their competitive advantage. I feel that investing in the pharmaceutical industry is riskier than other sectors, due to the demanding and challenging need for constant innovation. An inability to bring new products to market would eventually cause the downfall of the business. So if I don't have full conviction, I always feel that the cash will be better suited elsewhere. It might turn out to be a good move, it might be a mistake, or it might not have any significant impact on my portfolio. But either way, as long as I am happy with my decision, then that's the most important thing for me. I also sold out of Franklin, as I already have a number of other financial stocks, and I felt that it wasn't adding anything unique. And I decided to sell my shares in Warner Brothers, which were given to me for free from the AT&T spin-off. The stock isn't paying a dividend and has never paid one. So after sitting on the shares for a while, I feel that the cash would get a better return in something that pays a dividend. After all of these buys and sells, this means that the overall yield for my portfolio as a whole currently sits at 3.45%, which equates to around £1,381 per year in predicted dividends, or £115 per month. There will always be a discrepancy between my actual dividends received and my predicted dividends, just due to the timing of me purchasing shares and then being eligible through the X date of the dividends. But I'm hopeful to at least start hitting £100 per month as an average throughout the rest of the year. Over the coming months, I'm holding back my spending a little bit based on what I mentioned earlier about the cost of living increases. I'm still adding funds to my portfolio, but not actually buying anything just yet. I've seen some inflationary predictions, which suggest that quarter four of this year could see the cost of living issue worsen, with CPI inflation in the UK potentially hitting 13.1%. For this reason, I want some cash set aside for two reasons. Number one, if food and energy prices increase to a point where I'm really struggling to afford them, I can pull this cash out to be used for that. And number two, if food and energy prices increase, but at a manageable level, there might be an opportunity to add future dividend income at a discount. I really don't advocate trying to time the market, so my approach is more related to my first point. And I did a video on timing the market, which I'll add at the end of the video and in the description. I only intend on holding a bit of cash back for three months at most, so in the grand scheme of things, it shouldn't affect my portfolio too much over the long term. Plus, we don't know what will happen in the meantime. The government could step in with a plan to help with the cost of living prices, or the prices might just naturally return to previous levels. And then I'll just invest the cash that were held back straight into the portfolio. 
Now let's look at the dividend income that I received over the last couple of months. In July, I actually received £143.10 in dividends from nine different stocks. Notable dividends include £49.81 from VOOC and £41.64 from VHYL. Shares of VOOC trade at around £32, so I should now be able to buy at least one new share of VOOC each quarter with the dividends that I receive. It's my aim to keep building this across all of my holdings over the long term, as it will hopefully start to kickstart the snowball effect. In August I received £74.75 pence from seven different stocks, and most were around the £12 to £15 mark, which shows some nice consistency. So, looking into this graph, which shows all of my dividends since starting investing in 2020, we can see that the numbers are increasing year on year. If we compare the purple 2020 bars with the blue 2021 bars and the green 2022 bars, the average monthly dividend in 2020 was £45.29. The average in 2021 was £77.88. And the average in 2022 so far is £97. So in just two years I've managed to double my first year's total. My short to medium term aim was to eventually earn an average of £150 per month consistently. At the current yield I will need to invest £52,173 to theoretically hit this. So I do have some way to go. And will need to invest around a further £11,204. If I can invest a minimum of £750 each month, plus reinvested dividends, this should take around 14 months. It is something that I'll carry on working towards, and I'm confident that this will happen one day in the future if I stick to my investment strategy. As always, all dividends stay in the portfolio and are reinvested into purchasing more shares. My portfolio has earned a total of £2,285.60 in dividends, since I made my very first share purchase in December 2019. By reinvesting the dividends, this has increased my portfolio from £38,683.33 to £40,968.93, which is a growth rate of around 5.91% so far. I do expect this percentage to get larger over time, as more dividends are received and then reinvested. I also invest in real estate and currently own two buy-to-let properties. Since my last update, this is what the finances look like. The rental income has remained constant, as have the management fee and the mortgage cost. And thankfully, I've still not had any repairs or maintenance issues for a while, which hasn't always been the case, so fingers crossed that this carries on. Therefore, my pre-tax profit over the two months is £851.79 a month, and £1,703.58 in total. This profit just sits in a separate rental bank account to cover the mortgage payments and the tax bill, and I also use it as a bit of an emergency fund and dip into it every so often if needed. Also, I would draw on this cash should we see any deep extreme market crashes, and I had the opportunity to purchase some heavily discounted dividend stocks. Now that you've seen my portfolio update, I'd be really interested to hear from you. So how's your portfolio been performing recently? Do you agree with my buys and sells? And is there anything that I've missed from the video that you'd like to ask me? Let me know in the comments section below. I'll be reading and responding to every message that I can. So I hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and I hope that it's given you inspiration and ideas for your own personal finances. If you have, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss out on any future monthly reviews. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.